Ladies and gentlemen, we'll be here with a special 4th of July global transmission tomorrow. And then back this Sunday live, 4 to 6 p.m. Central Standard Time with the Sunday worldwide broadcast as well. Lord Moncton is our guest, and I wanted him to continue getting into the specifics uh, of uh, this Professor, think climate change isn't man-made? Then prove it. Professor offers $30,000 reward for anyone who can disprove his theory. Texas-based professor has issued a challenge. I want to send my reporters down there to climate change deniers. See, Holocaust deniers. Uh, Dr. Keating is offering 17,500 pounds or roughly $30,000 dollars to anyone that can disprove the theory that human activity is warming the planet. He is so sure of his claim that he is not expected to pay out anytime soon. Anyone can enter the competition and the work doesn't need to be original. But Dr. Keating says he will be the final judge on winning or losing the entries. That's the Daily Mail. You know, what a sick joke uh, for this, uh, quote, Texas, Texas professor. That'd be like if I said, yeah, you can enter a contest to prove that this guy, uh, you know, isn't a knuckle-dragging uh, fraud. But there isn't an impartial group of judges here. No, I will judge. Because I know you're full of baloney. I, I, I mean, no one would buy tickets to that. No one would say that wasn't rigged. It's like Al Gore famously, I have this in the film Endgame, going, no one doubts, not one scientist on Earth, that man-made global warming is real and is going to flood everybody by 2013 and that the Arctic will be completely melted. Of course, it didn't happen. It got bigger than ever. And then one congressman goes, excuse me, um, got to play that clip again. I forget which congressman goes, excuse me, it isn't all the scientists. There's thousands uh, and a bunch of the people in the UPC report that they say they never were actually in that report. Well, Congressman, there are people that believe we didn't go to the moon, too. I'm not talking about, I'm talking about credible scientists. And the Congressman's like, listen, there are a bunch of people who weren't in that report who say their names were put on it. Uh-huh, aliens are going to get me. Like when Jesse Ventura, the former governor, goes and talks to the Congressman, he goes, I have your bill here for civil unrest and FEMA camps for Americans. He goes, no, there's no bill. I don't believe space aliens are going to come out of machines and eat me. That's their response. And, and again, the, the Republicans have been horrible. But now the Democrats are going for broke for a total takeover. So Lord Moncton, I want to get into this professor. People should go visit him uh, at, at, where he's a professor. I'll tell folks where he's a professor uh, in a moment. But, I mean, these stunts have got to be called. I mean, the media is reporting on him like, well, see, he just proved it. You know, he's the judge and he's the winner. Don't people see through this as a joke? Because nearly all the media are on the far left nowadays, you know, you're an honorable ex exception. You're so far on the far right, you've almost fallen off the edge. But I mean, um, you know, all the far left media, they are doing their best to um, give the, 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 the new world order every favor they can. And when I say new world order, I'm not just using a vague right-wing reds under the beds phrase. At Paris next year, next December, they're going to make the next really big attempt to introduce a world government treaty. Now, in Copenhagen a few years ago, 2009, they made the mistake of publishing it first on the web, where a colleague of mine found it, Dr. Willis Soon at the Harvard Smithsonian Center for Astrophysics. He sent it to me. I publicized it first all over Canada, then all over the United States. The video in which I mentioned it went viral. Two million people had seen it in a week. I mean, it was huge. Still the fastest uh, YouTube platinum for any political speech. And then what happened was they paid for a dozen bogus pages on the web, which contained somewhere within them the words Moncton video. They paid each of the search engines to put these bogus pages of complete gibberish that nobody would have wanted to read. It was just strings of letters and numbers uh, over and above the video that had had two million hits. That cost them, according to an expert who got in touch with me about it, not less than a quarter of a million dollars just to silence one person making one speech about their planned proposal to take over the world using the climate treaty as an excuse. What then happened, Alex, is really fascinating. In Melbourne, Australia, a left-wing radio station decided that I was just a right-wing kook. They sent a copy of the draft treaty of Copenhagen 
to a Queen's counsel, a senior attorney. And they said to him, please, will you read this for us? And will you tell us whether or not Lord Monckton is right to say that they're trying to uh, set up a world government that isn't elected? And it's going to be a real world government. And do they use the word government in the treaty? And so, you know, they were sneering. They thought it wouldn't turn out to be real. The Queen's counsel, the senior attorney, came back to them and he said, look, he said, Monckton has got it wrong. It is ten times worse than anything he said. This is a bid to take over the world and to stamp out democracy everywhere and to have a single, central, global government using the environment and the climate simply as a fig leaf behind which this new tyranny by Clark will be extended worldwide. The EU has already done it in Europe. Now they're going to make it go worldwide. There are EU advisers telling the UN how to grab power by making sure that each new treaty by which power is handed over by usually left-wing governments to international bodies that nobody elects is kept secret from the people until after it has been signed. And that's the technique that the, the European Union has used. I once spent years trying to get hold of a copy of what eventually became the Treaty of Maastricht. I eventually got the first copy in the country and began writing about it and the foreign office denied that any such document existed and so i produced photocopies of it i put it up on the newspaper i was writing for the evening standard they still went on pretending it existed and two years later they signed it incredible lord monkton let's go to the model of australia and talk about ukip some because you know taking yeah. uh, taking not just the united states but the world back australia back uh, if I remember correctly, uh, they then demonized you uh, in an attack piece, backfiring in, in, in TV and print articles all over Australia. That then caused you to be a cause celeb. You traveled to Australia repeatedly, toured the country, speaking to packed halls of tens of thousands, debated people on television, and now they're set and say they have the votes. We'll put it on screen next week to repeal the carbon tax that's been devastating Australian farmers, factories, you name it. Uh, National Affairs, the Australian newspaper, carbon tax set for repeal next week. Uh, you helped get the secret Copenhagen Treaty that got the third world to pull out and not vote for passage in the UN, all because you took action. They blocked you from the UN meeting in Durban, South Africa. You literally parachuted into the meeting, uh, which was a stunt, fighting stunts with stunts. And, and, and again, it's just an example of taking action, perseverance, what it can do we're gaining ground against them do you disagree with that statement and elaborate on what happened in australia because if they repeal it this is a stunning victory because i briefed tony abbott who's now the prime minister oh three or four years ago at his request i was in canberra i got a message from his office saying please call in whenever you can and so i went there and had half an hour with him and we talked through this climate thing and he said look i've got to be very careful he said because there are those in my party who think this is a problem. He said, I don't really think it is, but I have to be very careful how I play it. But he said, it's quite clear that even if it were a problem, having carbon taxes is not the solution to the problem. And that's the rather crafty way in which he's managed to persuade his own party that they should stand with him and oppose the carbon tax, because it, even if there were a problem, the carbon tax is not a good solution to it. And so he's a very, very good man. He's, he does a lot of, uh, privately, a lot of good works quietly, which he doesn't publicize. A very, very unusual politician. And I'm hoping he'll be the prime minister there for a very long time. The left, of course, absolutely loathe him. And because he has said that the, the climate thing is all nonsense, that he and Stephen Harper in Canada are the two who have stood out against this nonsense. And as it happens, I've briefed both of them on this. All it needs is for the, these leaders to meet Moncton, and they change their view on the climate, Alex. It's simply amazing. I want to shift gears back to this professor, because the media is besmirching my great state by saying he's a Texas professor. He's actually from the Naval War College, sneaking around here. And that's another issue that they've had the Navy, the Marines, the Army putting out climate uh, hysteria. They've had NASA scientists putting out stuff, uh, you know, to fearmonger and then using the name. Uh, I mean, this is outrageous. It is. I think that this, this professor with his silly scare, I wrote to him on his website and I said, look, are you prepared to have a, an independent third party judge, preferably a real judge, who's used to assessing 
evidence fairly on both sides of a case, and oh no, he was not. He ran a mile from that. This man is frightened. He knows perfectly well that if there were any independent trial of this matter, he knows perfectly well who would win. In fact, I'm now working with TV producers in Canada, and we are going to put global warming on trial. And we're going to have a real judge, probably a retired one, but a real one, in a real courtroom. We're going to have, I'm going to be the prosecutor of global warming, and they've said their difficulties in finding anybody who will now defend it. <laughs> so I've given them a few names that I think might be prepared to defend it. We're each going to be allowed to choose our own witnesses. There will be a fairly chosen jury. And what we're going to do is we're going to put this in a theatre. And the idea is that then in this theatre, every night, there will be a two-hour uh, courtroom drama, effectively. Great idea. And the, case, and the case will be argued before a jury chosen from that night's audience. They get their money back if they agree to come onto the jury. And the jury will then have, uh, hear the evidence, and they'll have to be honest and try to decide it. On Ooh, the that's basis. bold to do it in Canada, because they've really bought a lot of the brainwashing up there. But what is interesting is that the ordinary people haven't 